Good day, people. The Oracle is with us today to help sort out these beautiful Pico SL389-388 switch machines. We gotta set these up for DCC. One thing you see here I'm doing is I'm pulling out the back clips. So these are going to be used with the tortoise switch machine. And basically there's going to be a rod coming up through the layout that's going to be able to turn these side to side. So these originally <coughs> from the manufacturer have a, <coughs> a plastic cover and then a V style clip with tent spring clip with tension on it that will hold the points either direction. You can operate that by hand. But like I said, we're going to be using the tortoise switch machine, so we're going to get rid of that. And the other point is the points in the middle that actually are going to the frog. We're soldering those. Uh, let's see. I'll wait until the next clip of <coughs> um, soldering comes up. So let's see. Here's another one. Yeah, see, I'm using alcohol to clean it. And right there, uh, soldering is going down in those points. And when you have it close up, you can see what it looks like in your hand. But... Basically what that's doing is it's giving it a solid connection between the actual points and the frog connections and also creating a sort of um, <coughs> spring uh, spring tension, creating a tension on the rail so that way when they're flung to one side that they will stay and keep tension on those rails in um, you know consideration with the, uh, the tortoise switch machine. So we're just going through a couple of these. I fast forward the crap out of it just so you can see the process. Well, you just saw I'm cutting off the ends. If you're real picky, you can go back and put the ties back in. I didn't necessarily care. It just got real close where I didn't have to do that and look like it blend it in together pretty well. But that's one thing you can do. Be careful with the soldering. If you use the soldering iron too long, you will definitely melt the plastic and basically ruin the switch. So you want to be real careful. Also getting some of those solder points down to where the points are is a little bit difficult. Hello, hello. So I'm editing this video and um, of course I want to add more context to it because just me on the screen there is not enough. It's not zoomed in enough um, and I'm like, well, how am I going to show these guys what's going on? So I have a few that, you know, for sale, whatever, but <clears throat> these haven't been altered or messed with. They're brand new out of the packaging. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to share with you a bunch of information, but also to find the same information, sort of, um, in the little pamphlet they give you, a brochure with the Pico turnouts, they give you kind of um, how they need to be set up. And I'm not gonna go through everything, but you can see in here, if you open it up, you can. they give you all the information. <clears throat> this one's not as detailed. But yeah, they basically tell you, hey, you gotta splice a rail here here to make it easy for DCC and that's that with this one so what I'm doing on the video and this is actually this is a unifrog so this one as you can see here it comes with this jumper wire you can take that and connect it to a tortoise machine and it will automatically select the polarity uh, for the frog when the train enters the turnout, which is super helpful. These are on my um, California wild, uh, wildfire and growth exhibit layout, and they're, they work really good. The only thing is right at the points here, or the end of the frog, let's see, let's turn it around. I cut these ties out. Oh, there you go, you can see better. I cut these top two ties out uh, just to get rail joiners in there, but you you can do it uh, when you solder these. 
be fast because if you hold the solder on it too long, this will melt the plastic. And in turn, it will melt this plastic right here and you won't be happy. I mean, there's about 30, 35 a switch. So you want to be kind of careful. Uh, so yeah, and then also, let's see if I can show you this. What I'm doing on the video is, firstly, I'm, let's see if I can zoom in here. I'm soldering these two points, which will be these two. So you do that because when you want the, when the, when the points here are thrown, you know, right? I know this still has a switch in it or the clip in it, but it kind of creates some connection here, which is good. You want that. Um, so that's why you do that, which in the video thing, I'll, uh, show you more. And then the other thing I'm doing also in the background is right in here. It depends if you want to hand throw them, you can leave it like this and you just have a switch thrown like that. Or you take this clip out by prying up these two tabs. You see here, here, and here, right at the edge of my fingernail. Pry these two up. And you take this off and carefully remove the spring, and then you will have a free moving point system, which you can attach to, um, as you see here, there's two holes, two holes for either side. You can attach a tortoise there, or some of the switches based on the location on the layout. I've drilled out the center, this piece right here, very carefully, and I've put the switch through there. And the tortoise thing, um, I got plans for another video on that, but that's going to be um, another day. Um, these videos are pretty involved, and I like doing them, but I've been kind of busy lately. So anyways, that's kind of what you're looking at and what I'm doing in the background. This is a Unifrog. As you can see, it has a jumper wire. And I don't remember, I believe you still have to put either cut these gaps in the frog or use a insulated reel joiner. You have to go through it on, on you know, uh, figure that out. There's a bunch of information out there, which I'm going to share with you. But on these ones, pretty good with the Unifrog. Uh, that helps. And then just to show you, give you some context, this is a regular electro frog with no Unifrog. As you can see, there's no separation here two by two or side by side two by two uh, I'm building a cabin now you see how there's plastic gaps which will separate so this area will be the one that's charged however on this one and this is why you have to set these up differently this is just straight connection and also they have a jumper wire that will connect these two points as you can see because nothing's connected here so yes same thing is these are these are a little more work I think or feel but yeah two points to solder you got the throw bar so anyways keep watching I'm gonna be sharing the website with you which is also going to be the link I'm sharing in the description below so here's the Pico turnout website this is not specifically made by Pico some kind person went out of their way to create this website for help with the Pico turnouts and I'll go through it you can see here there's just a bunch of different style turnouts and then it will get to the electrical connections which you will see there there's so much information on these switches here it's it's a bit ridiculous but it'll answer all your questions so there's another setup they give you curved turnouts, straight turnouts, the, let's see, scroll down here. Oh yeah, the back of it, which I was showing you with the jumper wires. So this is a three point turnout. They have these set up and how you would attach it to a tortoise, which is good, which I might go over one day in a future video. But yeah, so the three point turnouts regular turnouts, curved turnouts, and also crossovers. This would apply to many crossovers. So that's it. Thanks for watching and feel free to check out that link below if you are in the Pico turnout building phase. Other than that, like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next video. Take care.